Hey, this is Pastor Aaron Pino. I'm the lead pastor of Overflow Church, and I just want to say thank you for listening to our podcast. It's my prayer that this message encourages you, builds your faith, and helps develop you in the spiritual maturity. Enjoy the message. All right, who's ready for the Word of God today? Amen. Thanks. Awesome. If you would, go ahead and turn with me to Psalms chapter 22 and verse 3. Psalms 22 and verse 3. And as you are turning there, Psalms chapter 22 and verse 3, I want to remind you that we are in the middle of a series entitled, The Power of Praise. Mm Mm-hmm. The Power of Praise. And I've said this for several weeks. I want you to get this deep down in your spirit. I believe that praise is the key that unlocks the door. Now, it's all right. We're going to warm up here in a little bit, so you don't have to shout me down right away. But I'm just telling you, we're about to be praising the Lord before the day's over. Is that okay? Uh Uh-huh. Praise is the key that unlocks the door. You might say, Pastor Aaron, what door does praise unlock? Read this with me. Psalms chapter 22 and verse 3. Stand with me, if you would, as I read this portion of Scripture. We're getting started early today. I promise I won't, I won't have, we won't do the Catholic thing, rise, sit, rise, sit, okay? Even though a lot of people in my family are Catholic on my dad's side. We're not Catholic in this church this morning. Glory be to God. Come on, somebody. But watch this. Psalms chapter 22 and verse 3, it says this, but you, speaking of God, but you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, In other words, Lord, you are wholly enthroned on the praises of your people. Let's pray. Father, bless the word this morning. Anoint me to declare what you have for everyone in this room today. Let your word run swiftly and let the articulation go beyond our natural ears and may it affect our spirit, man, today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Shout amen as you have your seat this morning. So praise is the key that unlocks the door. What is the door that praise unlocks? Praise unlocks the door. You ready for this? For the throne of God to be manifested in our lives. We just read in this portion of scripture right now that God is holy, period. Uh, Can I just say some stuff this morning? God is holy. Holy means that he is separated. He's consecrated. That there is nobody like him. There is nothing like him. Okay? So you need to understand, because there is nobody like him, we don't have to add to him. In this life, it's not Jesus and. It's not Jesus and compromising for the culture. It's not Jesus and washing things down to make people happy. It's not Jesus and a little bit uh, a reserve because we don't want to ruffle any feathers. You need to understand something. My God, before the creation of time, he was, and whenever he was before the creation of time, he was holy. He didn't need to add anything to himself, and we don't need to add anything else to him either. For you are holy, Lord. The basis of our praise and the basis of our worship is the recognition of the greatness of who he is. Can I give it to you one more time? Praise is is responding to the greatness of God. Praise is a response to the greatness of God. Let me say it one more time because you need to get this deep down in your spirit. Because sometimes in church where we think praise is, is, uh, is the tempo of a song. Praise are the songs that we can clap our hands to and stomp our feet to. Praise is, is whenever Pastor Aaron gets up on the microphone, throws off his jacket. Starts screaming at everybody on the microphone. Has the kids up here on the stage jumping around, cartwheeling in, in the Holy Ghost. We think that that that's what praise is. No, praise is so much more than that. Praise is recognizing the greatness of God and responding accordingly. Can I take it one step further? 
Now, you understand, I don't preach long. It's just my intros that take all the time, okay? I haven't even gotten to the body of what I want to talk about today. But you need to understand something. If praise is the response to the greatness of God, that means when you give, it's an act of worship. That means whenever you serve, it's an act of worship. That means whenever you sing a song, it's an act of worship unto the Lord. That means whenever you raise your family in the admonition of God, it's an act of worship. That means whenever you live like a Christian on the workforce, because you love him, and you recognize that you're not working for a paycheck, you're working in all things unto the Lord, when you even go to your job on Monday morning, it's an act of worship. My friend, you need to get this deep down in your spirit. Praise and worship is a response to the greatness of who God is. So that's why right here in Psalms 22 verse 3, You are holy. The psalm writer is telling us, I recognize who you are, God. I recognize that you are high and lifted up. I recognize that there is nobody like you. I recognize that there never has been. There never will be. Come on now. And so, Lord, I recognize you as holy. So the psalm writer lifted up some praise unto the Lord in that moment. But even beyond that, the psalm writer caught a revelation. And the revelation is this that he is holy, and that he is enthroned on the praises of his people. David understood whenever he praised the Lord that God himself was released into every one of David's circumstances and situations. What does that mean? It means whenever you lift your hands, when you lift your voice, when you clap, whenever you shout, whenever you do a dance, come on now, whenever you live in, the, in your, your life Monday through Sunday, come on now, as a living praise unto the Lord, you are inviting his manifested throne into your life. Now, you might not understand what that means. That might be a little ethereal for you, but let me break it down a little bit further. Can I do this for you? I can't think about the throne of God without thinking about the prophet Isaiah. And the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, he said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Now watch what he says. Now you don't have to turn there, but you can read in your devotional time this week. He says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, and he was seated on the throne exalted high the train of his robe filled the temple and the angels circled around him and they worshiped him so what does it mean whenever you praise and the throne of god is released to your life it means this first and foremost that god the god and the lord of the angel armies that's what lord of hosts means okay lord of hosts means that he is he is the commander in chief of all the angels you with me So whenever you worship and the throne of God is released and established in your life, that means that what you get is you get all of heaven's power, strength, dominion, ministry released into your life. Now, I I don't have time to talk to you about angels and the seraphim and the cherubim and ministering spirits and all this. All you need to get deep down on the inside of you is whenever you praise, heaven is activated in your life. Okay, y'all will get that one on the ride home. It's all right. It's all right. Around the throne were angels, and he is the Lord of hosts. Angels, the throne of God. Whenever he does this, the armies of the Lord. The armies of the Lord. The armies of the Lord. Now, you need to understand this about the armies of the Lord. The armies of the Lord are greater than the military in the United States. They're greater than the military in Russia and Ukraine and in China. The armies of God are the greatest army that this planet has ever known. So when you worship, my God, my God, when you worship, heaven's military force is released on your behalf. So when you come on a Sunday morning and you lift your hands and you praise, it's not just singing a song. 
When you lift your hands and worship, it's not just doing what Pastor Aaron encourages to do on a Sunday morning. No, no, no. When you praise the Lord, all of heaven stands at attention and they say, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? You need healing? I got you. You need deliverance? I got you. You need reconciliation in your relationships? I got you. What do you need? When we praise, heaven is released on our behalf. But not only does it say that around the throne were the angels, it says this in Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. He was seated on the throne, exalted high, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Now I get because we live in America, we don't really understand the power of kingdoms. We think democracies or, 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 or a, 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 a republic, right? We think of, of voting somebody in and voting somebody out. We think about if we like them, they, they're good to go. If we don't like them, they're not good to go. Now, don't get me started on the political stuff. Or, you know what I'm saying? Don't get me started on that. It's for another time around a coffee table because I don't want anybody to throw nothing at me, okay? But because we live in America, we miss out on the potency of a kingdom. And what you need to understand about a kingdom and the king of a kingdom is the way he dressed. The train of a king was indicative of the testimony of his authority and victories. Now, you, you, can, you can look this up later. Just You can take my word for it, though. But what kings used to do back in the day is whenever they would go out to war and they would defeat one of their enemies, they would actually go to the king that was dead and defeated, and they would cut a part of the train of that king's rope, and that victorious king would then take that part of that defeated king's robe and tie it to the train of his robe. And so whenever a king would walk in and the train of his robe would fill the courts, it was a sign. It was a sign of victory. It was a sign of authority. It was a sign of a conquering nature. <sighs> Y'all ain't ready for this. So whenever Isaiah... In Isaiah chapter 6, saw the Lord seated on his throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. What Isaiah was telling us is I saw the Lord on his throne and what I saw was victory after victory after victory after victory after victory after victory after victory. Come on, somebody. The train of God's robe is victory over sickness, victory over sin, victory over barrenness, victory over bondage, victory over a broken heart, victory over disappointment. When Jesus comes and he is on his throne, it is victory. When you praise, the throne of God is manifested in our life. That means when we praise the victory of our undefeated king, the victory of our undefeated God comes and is manifested in our lives. <sighs> Don't mess with me. My king has never lost. Don't mess with me. He knows no defeat. Don't mess with me. Even though I might be staring down the barrel of something, what you need to understand this, all I got to do is lift my hand, lift my voice. All I have to do is praise the Lord and the victory that belongs to him comes upon my life. Come on, is anybody in the room thankful for the victory of God? For the Lord is holy and he is seated, enthroned on the praises of his people. So when you praise, child of God, understand this. You're not just singing a song. You're not just serving on a team. You're not just raising a family. Whenever you praise the Lord, all of heaven is at your disposal. And aren't you grateful that in this kingdom there is no defeat? Aren't you grateful that in this kingdom, all we know is victory? Come on now. 
Praise is the key that unlocks the door. Watch this now. Psalms 150. I'm going to read this. You can turn if you want. Psalms 150, it says this. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of a trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Come on now. I like it loud. I'm sorry if you don't. I'm trying to get it louder in the room, but just bear with us. I want it loud. You know what I'm saying? So... Bring some earplugs to church. Glory be to God. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him with the clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What I love about this portion in Psalms is it answers the question, the who, when, where, why, how of of praise. Whenever you're going to learn something, whenever you go deep into something, it's good to have, have these questions answered. Amen. So the who we praise is the Lord. Come on now. We praise the Lord in this house. We don't, we don't praise Allah. We don't praise Buddha. We don't praise the Democratic Party. We don't praise the Republican Party. We don't praise Joe Biden or Donald Trump in this house. Come on now. Y'all are too quiet. I don't care if I step on your toes. You need to hear this this morning. We are not a part of this world. We are part of a kingdom. And the thing that we are part of supersedes the country in which we live in. Listen, before I'm an American, I'm a, king, I'm a kingdom guy. Before I'm a Hispanic, I'm a kingdom guy. Come on. Hopefully in, your, in the room, before you're a Democrat or Republican, you are part of a kingdom. Come on now. My identity is not of this world. My identity is a part of the kingdom. And so because of that, who I praise is not myself or who is in the White House. Who I praise is Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah, Jehovah, Je- come on now, Jehovah, Jireh. Je- mm, I'm telling you, I don't, mm, mm, mm. in case you are wondering, in this house, we praise God. In case you're wondering, in this house, we praise God. So who do we praise? We praise the Lord. When do we praise? We praise in the sanctuary. When we gather together, we're going to praise the Lord. Like I said, so that means it's going to get loud in here. And listen, don't just try to come late to church because you want to skip the music. Mm -hmm. I know some people, well, I don't like coming. I don't like coming early because, you know, my kids are in there and they're kind of, they kind of do this and they kind of distract me. No, listen, just put the babies down here in the front. Okay. Just let the babies get close to the anointing. All right. Let them get as close as they can in the room and watch what God will begin to do. And that child, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but that child who might be giving you problems yesterday, when you get them in the presence today, they become a different kind of, of child in your house. So we're going to praise God in the sanctuary. So don't try to come late and miss out on on the music because I'm telling you, when we lift our hands, when we do our dance, when we shout, when we sing, something happens, not just in the room, something happens in you. So we praise in the sanctuary. And this is what Psalms 150 says. Uh, where, uh, when do we praise? We praise in the sanctuary. We praise in the mighty firmament. And the mighty firmament means a spreading out. It's indicative of God's omnipresence that he is everywhere at all times. So where can you praise? You can praise him in your car on the way to work on Monday. You can praise him in the shower after you drop your kids off and you're getting ready to start your day. You can praise him before you go to bed at night when you're laying up in the, in the bed with that spouse of yours who you want who you need they need a breakthrough in their life i don't know who i'm talking to today you can praise god anywhere you want to praise god why because god is everywhere at all times so we praise him in the mighty firmament he is spread out wherever you are so that's where we can praise why do we praise we praise him for his mighty acts and his excellent greatness aren't you glad that he's a good god Aren't you glad that he's a mighty God? Aren't you glad that he's an excellent God? Aren't you glad that he just doesn't do things, but he does things well? That's why we praise the Lord. Mm. I'm telling you right now, I, I I have partnered with some people in my day, 
and I've experienced frustration because some of the people I've partnered with, they don't do it like how I want it done because they don't do it to a good degree. They don't do it in an excellent degree. You ever been there before? I have. I've, I've partnered with people and I just said, you know what? Hey, God bless you. Bada bing, bada boom. We don't see eye to eye. Go ahead and, and get up out of here. But I'm so grateful that with God, he just doesn't do things. He does things well. That he actually does it better than what I thought it should be done. <laughs> I'm so thankful that he not only saved me from the pit of hell, but he healed me and he delivered me. So not only did he bring me out of Egypt, but he brought Egypt up out of me too. Can I just touch on this a minute? Can I, can I help some people out today? Listen, there is nobody that's going to treat you like God. There is nobody who's going to do you good like how he can do you. People are going to talk about you, backbite on you. They're not going to take care of you. They might, they might, you might work for somebody and they don't pay you what you're worth. This is what you need to understand, that God is mighty and he is excellent in all of his ways. So he just doesn't do something. He does that something well. And so why do we praise him? Because there is nobody like him. We praise him because he is the mighty God and what he does, he does so extremely well. Is anybody in the room thankful? How do we praise? We praise him and it starts talking about instruments and dancing. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but how do you praise him? You praise him by moving your body and releasing a sound. More on that later. And then who else is to praise? And we said we praise the Lord. That's the who. But who is to praise? The Bible says that everything that has breath must praise the Lord. I want you to take a deep breath right now. That means you are qualified to praise. Well, Pastor Aaron, I just don't like the songs. Pastor Aaron, I don't like the volume. Pastor Aaron, I don't like the people. Pastor Aaron... I don't like the way you preach. I don't like the way you sing. Guess what? Tough luck, honey. Because you're not doing it for me. You're not praising me. You're not shouting for me. You're not doing it for me. Listen, the reason why you can praise is because God has given you breath in your lungs. I'm... And so you know what? Whether or not the song is my preference, I don't care. So many people get caught up on, on their preference. Well, we're supposed to sing only hymns in the church. Then you meet somebody that says, we're only supposed to sing new songs in the church. We're only supposed to... Listen, it's not about preference, y'all. It's not about preference. It's about his presence. So what do I got to do? What do we got to do? What, I, I don't care what I got to do. I don't care. If I like it, cool. If I don't like it, cool. I don't care what I got to do. I'm trying to get to the throne. I'm trying to get to the feet of Jesus. I'm trying to get around with the 24 elders and the four living creatures. Come on now. And the millions and millions of angels are circled around his throne. What do I got to do? I don't care if I like it or not because you know why? He has put breath right here in my lungs so you know what i'm gonna sing i'm gonna clap i'm gonna dance i'm gonna shout why because with this lung in my body i will praise the lord come on somebody if he's giving you breath in your lungs i dare you to give him a 10 second praise hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. I'm talking to you about the power of praise. That was just my introduction, y'all. Pray for your pastor. Pray for me. I'll pray for you, okay? But I'm talking to you today about unlocking praise. Unlocking praise. I just told you some of the ways that praise unlocks things in your life. But now I want to show you how you in your life can actually praise the Lord. Because you know, all right, yeah, Pastor Aaron, if I praise the Lord, the throne of heaven is going to be released in my life. The, the angel armor is going to be released. The throne of God, victory after victory. But what do I do? How do I praise? I'm going to give you keys to unlocking praise. Now, there are seven Hebraic words 
in scripture that describe praise as a function. Now look at your neighbor and say seven words, but he's only given us two today. There you go. Yeah, come back next week. There's some of y'all getting all nervous looking at the clock, right? I didn't bring my watch today. I got one of these little metal bands on, you know what I'm saying? So you're hoping I look at my watch to tell the time. You, yeah, sorry, sorry. We do God all day. There are seven Hebraic words to describe the function of praise in Scripture. Now, today I'm just hopefully, maybe give us two. And I say hopefully, maybe, because I'm telling you, it's hard to stop a, pe- a person when they know the power of praise. It's hard to stop a person when they know the power of praise. <clears throat> Do I got any praisers in the room today? So watch this. The first word that we're going to talk about, it's in Hebrew. It's called yada. Yada. The first part of yada is yad, which means the open hand, direction, or power. Ah is referring to Jehovah. So whenever you say yada, it means an open hand directed to Jehovah. So praise, yes, is shouting. We're going to talk about a Shabbat praise in the weeks to come. It's dancing. We're going to talk about halal in the weeks to come, right? That's a crazy praise. But today, I'm going to talk to you about yada. And what yada is, is whenever you lift your hands in thanksgiving to the Lord. And if you actually go deeper down into the meaning of yada, you ready for this? If you break it down even further, yada means to use your hands to throw an arrow or a stone. Now, I'm going to unpack this here in just a minute. Can I, is that all right? <clears throat> Watch this. You don't have to turn there, but in Psalms 9, verse 1, it says this. I will praise thee, O Lord, or I will yada thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. So when the psalm writer wrote that, he says, I'm going to lift my hands to you, O Lord. And when I do, I'm going to see your marvelous works manifested in my life. I like to refer to yada praise as the hands up and the hands out praise. Mm. Come on, someone just lift their hands all over the room. Come on, just lift your hands. That's a yada praise right there. This is the hands up and the hands out unto the Lord. When you lift your hands, when you praise the Lord, watch this. You can put your hands down. Whenever you do this, the Bible actually lets us know that whenever you lift your hands, you are actually slinging the stone of the Lord and releasing the arrow of God upon your enemies. Mm. Did y'all hear what I just said? When you lift your hands, you are releasing the stone of the Lord and the arrow of God into your enemies. Now, let me give you some scripture on this. And we're going to shout here in just a moment. I'm going to have you stand in just a moment and lift those hands and wave them around like you just don't care. Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 13. Watch this. I know I'm giving you a lot of word today, but I don't want people to be dumb. Can I get an amen? Amen. Well, we just went to church today. We just shouted and danced around, and we had a good time. Oh, really? What did y'all talk about? I don't know. Okay. Great. Next, right? I don't want you to be ignorant. Amen? The Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And I'm telling you, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you're going to need to know the power of yada in your life. You're going to need to know the power of lifting your hands to the Lord and having the stone of the Lord and the arrows of God released into your enemies on your behalf, okay? And one of the ways that you learn how to do this is through the releasing and the proclamation of the word of God. The word of God lets you know, I'm just going to say some stuff. The word of God, when we preach the word here, it lets you know that what I'm telling you is not my opinion. Because my opinion doesn't change anything. Mm. 
Now, let me, let me back up. My, my, all my opinion can do is maybe change your soul. But the word of God has a way to change your spirit. And in this house, I want people in this house to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. So when you hear the word of the Lord, I want something to burn on the inside of you. When you hear the word of the Lord, I want something that needs to break in your life, break in your life. Because the Bible tells us, you ready? That the word of God is like a fire that's shut up in my bones. So if you need something to burn away in your life today, get a hold of the word. And the Bible also says that, that the word of God is like a hammer that breaks the stone. So if you need something broken in your life today, get a hold of the word of God. My opinion is not what's going to break something in your life. It's the anointing. It's the word of God released. Am I talking to anybody here? Now, I know I'm kind of teach, preaching today. I know it's a little bit different, but you need to get this deep down in your spirit. You need to grab a hold of the word of God. Amen. Yada is the hands up and the hands out kind of praise. Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 3. I'm, let me read this for you right now. Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, choose some men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with, a ro with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses, watch this now, when Moses held up his hand. Y'all catching this picture? When Moses held up his hand, when Moses yadad the Lord, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let his hand down, the enemy prevailed. But Moses' hands became very heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady. Someone say, steady. His hands were steady until the sun went down. Verse 13. So Joshua defeated Amalek and the people with the edge of the sword. Yada is the hands up and the hands out praise. And what I love about this story is we read that there was a battle in a valley. There was a battle in the valley, but Moses said, you know what? I'm not going to fight in the valley. I'm going to go up to the mountain. Some of y'all in the room, you've been fighting in the valley. Some of y'all been swinging in the valley. Some of y'all, well, Pastor Aaron, Psalms 23 says that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil because his rod and his staff come for me. Yeah, you know what? Some of y'all want to live up in that valley of the shadow of death. I came this morning to tell somebody in the room, stop trying to fight in the valley and get to the top of the mountain. And whenever you get to the top of the mountain, you need to lift your hands as a yada to the Lord. And even though there's a battle raging in the valley, God is saying, I want you to come up higher. Come up higher from that, that disillusionment that you have. Come up higher from the disappointment. Come up higher from the barrenness. Come up higher from the sickness, from the disease. Come up higher. People of God, I declare to you prophetically this morning, thus saith the Lord. He says, come up higher. Come up higher. Come up higher. Some of y'all been in the valley too long and you've been trying to do this. You've been trying to do that. But what God is saying, when you come up higher, all you have to do is lift your hands in praise. Lift your hands in thanksgiving. Lift your hands in adoration. And I will do for you in the valley what you could not do for yourself. I don't know who I am talking to this morning, but there are some people in the room that you need to come up higher. There was a battle in the low place, but there was praise in the high place. You need to understand this, that praise is a place of elevation. 
Praise allows you to come up higher and not just see the perspective of the battle, but the perspective of heaven. Now, you need to understand we aren't denying the fight. What we are doing is we are enforcing the victory. Can I say it one more time? We're not denying the fight. We're enforcing a victory. Last year, whenever we got the doctor's report from my father-in-law, stage four cancer, ton of his soft tissues, metastasizing his bones. You know what we didn't do? Well, he's not sick. The doctor's got it wrong. He's not sick. You know what we said? See, it gets quiet in in the room right now because I know there's a lot of people of faith right now, and that's opposite to how you were taught. But you need to, you understand what we did? We didn't just we didn't deny that this cancer had grabbed a hold of his body. You know what we did? We got up a little bit higher. We didn't deny the fact that the doctors were saying something. We just said the doctors said this, but we know that we have a better report. So even though in the natural right now, it may look one way, it may sound one way, it might feel one way, we understand that if we can just come up to the mountain of the Lord, and if we can just come up a little bit higher and realize that the battle doesn't belong to us, it ba- the battle belongs to the Lord. And what we did, I'm telling you, we battled, we, we, I mean, we battled through praise. We battled through worship. We battled through anointing with oil and laying hands. And you know what happened? It might not have happened the first day, the second day, the first month, the second month, but we just got a report back from the doctor that they can't find any cancer in any of his soft tissues. And then they looked at the bones. This was just in January. I should have had him come up and tell us this whenever he was here last time. Just in January, he had another PET scan. And they said, well, Mr. Everett, um, we see a lot of scar tissue in there, but, but the cancer is going away. Two different doctors. Watch this. One doctor said this. Now, whenever I say this, you can't let me praise by myself, okay? One doctor said this. Well, it looks like the cancer has been mortally wounded. And watch this. Wait, wait, wait. Watch, watch. Another doctor, and these are not Christian doctors. Another doctor came up, and the doctor, he does not know the Lord. He said, well, Mr. Everett, it looks like the cancer is bowing its knee. Come on now. What you need to understand is there might be a fight in the valley, but if you can come up higher, if you can lift your hands, if you can worship the Lord, If you would just lift up a praise, an adoration, and a thanksgiving, God will do more for you than what you can do for yourself. Come on, someone give God a 15-second praise. Hallelujah! 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 Come on, that's only five seconds. Come on, give God some praise. Ha, ha, ha. Glory, 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 glory. Woo. I'm telling you right now, what I'm, what I'm telling you this morning is not a theory for me. What I'm telling you this morning is not an opinion for me that I had before Jesus came into my life. What I'm telling you this morning is that there is power when we praise. What I'm telling you this morning, that whenever you learn how to unlock praise in your life, God will will do more for you than what you can do for yourself. God will go to work on your behalf and do far greater and far better than what you ever thought was even possible. I got any people of praise in the house this morning? (sighs) Let me move on to the next one. So Yada is the hands up and the hands out praise. I could preach on the story of Moses more, but I'm not going to. I could tell you how he got tired and they put a rock underneath him and how the rock signifies Jesus Christ. And I could tell you how Aaron and her came and lifted his hands. And if you're not in the right environment, if they can't praise with you, and if they can't praise for you, then you need to find a different type of people. I could go there, but I'm not going to go here this morning. But what you need to understand is this. There is power when we praise. 
So yada is the lifting of the hands and it throws the stone and the arrow against your enemy. Come on, just lift your hands all over the room. Come on and just give God some praise right there. And as you lift your hands, the stone of the Lord is being released on your behalf. The arrow of the Lord is being released on your behalf. My God. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. So yada is the hands up and the hands down. The next one is this, Todon. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one, but someone in the room needs to hear this one. Toda means this. It's a confession of thanksgiving for God's mighty acts, a sacrifice of praise for what has been and for what will be. For what has been and for what will be. We're about to turn up in this room in just about five minutes, okay? <clears throat> you don't have to turn there, but Psalms 50 verse 23 says this. Who, whoever offers up praises or todah glorifies me. That's Psalms 50 verse 23. Whoever offers up praises or todah glorifies me. What does that mean? That means whenever we thank God for what he has done, it glorifies him. When we say, God, thank you for saving me. God, thank you for healing me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for bringing me out of Egypt and bringing Egypt out of me. God, thank you for this. And Lord, I thank you that you have brought me into the promised land. Cana, where I can dwell with you and you can dwell with me. Where you are my God and I am your person. Thank you, God. Guess what? Whenever you thank him in that regard with the thanksgiving, it glorifies the Lord. Is there anybody in the room that is thankful for what God has done? I'm telling you, I'm thankful that he has saved me. I'm thankful he has delivered me. I thank you that he has brought me out and he has taken me in. I'm thankful that he has translated me from, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his marvelous light. Is there anybody else in the room this morning who is thankful for the Lord? Come on, I said, is there anybody else? in the room who is thankful for the Lord. I'm thankful that he has provided. I'm thankful that he has healed. I'm thankful that he has set me free. Come on. Now, I don't know about you. Maybe you've been cute your entire life. Maybe you just sat down in a chair your entire life and you grew up in this thing and God hasn't done anything for you. But I'm telling you, God has done too much for me for me not to be thankful for him. I've seen him as savior. I've seen him as deliverer. I have seen him as healer. And guess what? Not just in my life. In this room, I've seen him as savior. In this room, I've seen him as healer. In this room, I have seen him as deliverer. I'm telling you, I want you to give God a yoda prayer, a toad I praise today. Come on. Shout. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Thank you that you have kept me in my right mind. Thank you that you have provided for me every step of the way. I thank you, God. The toad of praise is the praise of thanksgiving and a testimony. A testimony. So it's not only thankfulness for what he has done, but it's thankfulness for what he is going to do. Here's the thing about a testimony. Everybody loves that word testimony. I got a testimony. We think it comes down to review, like a testimony is just a review on Yelp. A testimony is so much more than that. You cannot have a testimony without a test. Come on now. You, have I, has anybody in the room ever gone through a test? Is anybody in the room going through a test right now? Here's what you need to understand. The Todah praise is a praise of not only thankful for what God has done, but it's a thankfulness for what God is going to do. It's a thankfulness that God is in the process right now working your testimony out. 
Y'all didn't hear what I said this morning. God is working your testimony out right now. Well, Pastor Aaron, how can, how's he working now? I, I'm still sick. He's working it out. How is God giving me a testimony? Because my husband still doesn't serve the Lord. He's working it out. How can I, how is he working a testimony? My, my child is, is still not a Christian, not, hasn't come home, doesn't talk to me. He's working it out. Uh-huh. Come on now, somebody. What you need to understand is in the middle of your test, you need to be thankful because when you're thankful in the middle of your test, what you are actually doing is you are releasing a toda praise unto the Lord. Mm. Come on now. A toad of praise is saying, God, I might not see my healing yet, but I know you are the healer. I might not see salvation in my family yet, but I thank you that you're the savior. I might not see the fruition of every prom <laughs> of every promise that you have given me, but I know you're the promise keeper. Come on, whenever we lift up a toad of praise, which is a praise of thanksgiving for what he has done and what he is going to do, guess what happens the throne of God is released in our behalf and that mm -hmm, that thing that you've been thanking God for I'm telling you I've seen it time and time and time again when people learn how to praise in the midst of a bad doctor's report the healing comes when people learn how to praise in the midst of a salvation of a family member who's not there the salvation comes I'm telling you right now when you learn to todah when you learn to be thankful, not for what he has just done, but for what he is getting ready to do. There's some people in the room right now that God wants to shift your paradigm. Because up until right now, you have only praised him for what he has done. Well, Lord, I thank you that you provided for me back then, but I don't know if it's going to happen now. Friend, you got a todah. Lord, I thank you that, that I could sense your presence yesterday, but I can't sense your presence now. No, you got to toda. Lord, my marriage was, was good at one time, but it's not good now. I don't know what's going to happen. Listen, you need to learn how to toda. We have to become people who not only are thankful for what God has done, but we need to get into the position that even though we might not see it now, when we lift up a praise, we're going to see it eventually. I declare over you that healing is coming to you now. I declare over you that salvation of your family is coming to you now. I declare over you that God is making a way where there seems to be no way. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but if that's you, I dare you to give God a thanks for not only what he has done, but give him a thanks that it's on the way. Give him a thanks that it's on the way. Give him a thanks that it's on the way. Your healing is on the way. Your salvation of your family is on the way. Come on now. Your children are on the way. Your business is on the way. Thank God that your ministry is on the way. Come on now. Thank God that victory is on the way. Come, I don't know who needs to get up on their feet this morning, but I bet there's at least 10 people in the room that need to get up on their feet and thank God that even though it might not be seen in my life yet, I thank you that it is on the way. Come on, someone shout. Thanks for joining us and listening to this week's podcast. I want to give a special thanks to those who generously give to this ministry. It's because of your generosity that this ministry is made possible. If you would like to give, you can click the link in the show notes or go to overflowchurch.co slash give. If you enjoyed the podcast, you can subscribe and share this with your friends. And listen, if you're in the Las Vegas area, we would love to see you at one of our weekend services. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.